All right, hello friends. So we're gonna keep going. We're onto a new data structure. We're within our basic programmatic skills playlist. If you come to this video uh, just straight away, this is part of a larger playlist called basic programmatic skills where we go over uh, data structures, algorithms, recursion, big O complexity, all the basic stuff you would need to know to uh, know basic programmatic skills. Uh, so what we're gonna talk about today is trees. In the last video we were talking about stacks and queues. We're done with those. And now we're going to talk about trees, which is one of the more uh, complex and nuanced data structures that we're going to talk about. So uh, there's a lot to cover here. And in this video, it's going to be an overview. In the next video, we'll talk about a new big O uh, distinction that we're going to come into. And then after that, we'll actually code out some trees. And, uh, and then after that, we'll run some, some algorithms with them and talk about that. So anyways, let's get started. So data structures, trees. What is a tree? Uh, a tree is a data structure that has a hierarchical structure. Uh, unlike linked lists and arrays, those are linear in structure, meaning that uh, if you just have an array, there's really uh, a linked list or an array, there's really just kind of one way to iterate through it, and you have to he hit every single node or element as you're going through the linked list if you or the uh, array if you want to iterate through it. A data structure, since it has a hierarchical structure, we can kind of jump around the data structure as we're traversing through it. So it starts with a single root node or a parent node. Uh, it's like an inverted tree, and every child descends from only one parent. Uh, Parent-child relationship, uh, this is unidirectional. Um, also, it has leaf nodes uh, that are at the end of the tree and can have subtrees within a tree. So let's take a look at a diagram here, and this is brought by a homeboy named Andar K. Parmer. I found it on his blog. He made some really useful diagrams about... Uh, different. Uh, these are actually binary trees, which is what we're going to work with. But if you look at the if you look at the list of different tree structures, there's a lot. But what we're concerned with uh, is binary trees, and that's what we're going to go over. And these principles of learning about binary trees, they really do uh, kind of permeate into different other tree data structures. So if you learn this really well, you'll have a really good grasp of dealing with a lot of different kind of tree data structures. There's just simply too many out there to go over. But learning the basics about binary trees should give you the ammunition that you need. Uh, to do well in any kind of interview process or anything like that. So let's talk about trees here. Let's look at the, uh, let's open up our developer tools and let's go to a console right here. And, or not the console, but the elements tab. So what you'll see is that here, this is actually a tree data structure. So if you look at the head, the head has children. The, the, um, and the body has children as well. So the body has this root node, this root uh, DOM element is a child of this body. And then within the root, we have all of these. So we have a div with a class ABC, and then we have inside of that, we have a div with a script right there. So basically the idea is that this is actually a tree. This is a tree data structure. So this is a use case for it. the DOM, the document object model, it operates in a tree data structure like way. So that's, you know, they're useful like that. There are other use cases for it. So if you're playing like a uh, what what's in a tree? So like a like a an algorithm for playing chess. The way that the machine can play against you is it uses trees to determine what its next move will be. So there's a lot of different use cases for trees. Um, but let's go to binary trees and let's talk about them. So what is a binary tree? It's a type of tree with a few rules. Uh, the rules being something like each node can have one, two, or zero nodes as children, and each child can only have one parent. A node can't have three children. And each node represents a certain state. So let's take a look back at our tree right here. So the, this would be our root node. This would be child, child nodes of the root node. And then these would be child nodes of this node. And then these would be child nodes of these nodes. These down here at the bottom would be leaf nodes. So these are all leaf nodes right here. And with the, let's just say that we had, since it's a hierarchical structure, if we needed to get to this node right here and there was some form of relation between all these other nodes, Whereas in an array or a linked list, you would have to iterate randomly through all these different nodes. If it has a hierarchical structure, you can just go one, two, three calculations to get all the way down here. Whereas it might be O of N to get to this node if this node is at the end of the array or the linked list, for example, to traverse through it if you're, if you're searching for it. So, um, and each node represents a certain state. So there is a relationship between all of these nodes. So like, let's just say the most simple example would be that this root node was like a, you know, it was a number. And if the next number that was added in, if you wanted to insert, if it was smaller, it would go to the left. If it was larger, it would go to the right. And the same way here, if the number that you were inserting here was larger, it would go to the right. If it was smaller, it would go to the left. So you have this hierarchy structure all over the, uh, the tree, which allows some efficiencies there in time. So let's go back here. So that's what a binary tree is in a, in a broad sense. 
but let's take a look at some more specifics. So there are a couple of different types of binary trees in terms of like classifying them. One, the first one we'll look at, that we'll look at is a full tree. Um, a full tree means that every node has zero or two children. So let's look here, this is the full tree. You'll notice that right here, this node has zero children and this node has two children, this node has two children, and this node has two children. So every node in a full tree has either zero or two children. That's a full tree. Um, then you have a complete tree. So that's all levels are completely filled except maybe the last level. Also the last level has all nodes as left as possible. So let's look at a complete tree. So right here, this is a complete tree. All the nodes, the, the leaf nodes are at the same level, but all of this node, which only has one child, it is as left as possible. So this is a complete tree right here. So we've went over full tree, complete tree. Now we have one more to go over. This is a perfect tree. That means that all internal nodes have two children and all leaves are at the same level. So if you look here at this perfect tree, all the leaves are at the same level and each node has two children. There isn't like one sticking out here or anything like that. All of the, all the leaves are at the same level and all nodes have two children. Now you have a balanced tree here and a degenerate tree here. We'll get into that a little bit later when we talk about balancing trees because that gets uh, pretty hairy uh, fairly quickly. But this, the idea of having a perfect tree, a complete tree, a full tree, knowing what a binary tree is and knowing that there might be some efficiencies with laying out your data in a hierarchical manner like that is a, is a really good primer for what we're gonna do in our next video, which is we're actually gonna kind of do some lightweight math to where we go over uh, how you how you would calculate the amount of uh, damn how you would calculate the amount of nodes within a tree and how you would calculate how you get to log in time complexity so it's not anything crazy that we're going to do it's just a little bit of of math in the background and then afterwards we're going to actually code out a binary tree and we would use it in some examples to show how you would actually get those time efficiencies so this was just an overview i hope it helped uh stick in there we're gonna, uh, I even made a slide for it. It says, more in the next video, hang in there. So uh, when I was learning binary trees, it was kind of taxing and tedious and it was kind of boring. So I'm trying to keep you engaged, but at the same time, this is just kind of stuff that you gotta know. So do the work, learn about it, push through, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Take it sleazy.